I found a story that is a Vietnamese folk tale that might have some application for today's scriptures. So I thought I would share it with you. You might say it is a kind of you are what you eat story. And it is called a matter of use. A woman, a woman called her cook aside early one morning and said, tonight when my beloved visits, I want you to cook the food that has the most pleasant taste in the whole world. The cook quickly went out to the market where he made his purchase. That night, after serving many appetizers, he announced, the main dish tonight is tongue of pig. The woman was most surprised at the cook's choice and asked, why have you determined this to be the most pleasant taste in the world? The cook replied, when people love each other, their tongues say pleasant and loving things to each other. So is the tongue not the most pleasant thing in the whole world? You are not only a fine cook, the woman said, you are also a philosopher. The next day, the woman again approached the cook. Last night, my beloved and I found your choice most interesting. This evening, we would like you to prepare the most unpleasant thing in the whole world. Once again, the cook made his way to the market to make a purchase. That evening, he again served a variety of small dishes before announcing, the main course this evening is tongue of pig. When both the woman and her beloved expressed surprise at the choice, the cook explained, when people hate each other, their tongues say the most unpleasant things to each other. Is the tongue not the most unpleasant thing in the whole world. This story reflects a certain truth which is often referred to in sacred scripture. It is that what we say and how we say it reflects who we truly are. We are told that the tongue is mightier than the sword. But scripture also says that a tongue can be as sharp as a two-edged sword. This is reflected in our readings today. Our first reading from the book of Kings is about how God provided for Elijah. Elijah, weary and hungry from his journey, has rested and is about to give up. He is almost suicidal. The Lord provides for him food and drink from heaven, a hearth cake and a jug of water. When he finishes this, he is able to travel for 40 days and nights to continue his prophetic journey. This reading is to remind us of our gospel of two Sundays ago. In that gospel, Jesus fed the multitude of people with five loaves and two fish. The people who were fed by that miracle of Jesus could not praise him enough. They wanted to carry him off and make him a king. It was that same crowd that followed him on foot to the other side of the lake from where he was preaching. They were trying to catch up to him as we heard in the gospel last Sunday. We learn in that gospel that Jesus knew their hearts and catches them in their hypocrisy, pointing out that it was not because they really wanted to learn about God that they had followed him, but that they were trying to get more free food from him. Nevertheless, Jesus tries to teach them some more about God and about who he is as son of God. In today's gospel, we see the inevitable clash. The same crowd who was so recently willing to carry Jesus off and make him king now starts to ridicule him and to murmur against him when he again makes the statement, 
that he is the bread of life come down from heaven. Now maybe it is because Jesus is not going to feed them again. Maybe it is because they do not like what Jesus is saying. Whatever the reason, they turn on Jesus and they make it personal. They bring in his family. Now if Jesus were the kind of public figure we see today, there would have been one of two responses. The first being that Jesus would have struck out at the crowd, struck back. He could have made public the sins of everyone there if he had chosen to do so. Or he could have continued to take the crowd to task for their greed. The alternative response is he could have tried to explain the statement away. He could have rephrased it or even backed away from it or spent time justifying it all just to please the crowds. That is what we expect today. We expect public figures to please everyone. If everyone is happy, so be it. If everyone is upset, so be it. That's just a sure sign that you have something important to say. If everyone's happy, you're the genuine article. If everyone's uncomfortable, well, then they needed to be challenged. In other words, the thought today is whatever you have to do as long as people are hearing you. Well, thank goodness Jesus did not think that way. He simply says again, I am the bread of life. And then he basically tells them, if you come to me, it is because my Father has called you, and you will understand my words, and you will have life within you. If not, if you proceed in human terms and reject me, you will not have life in you. It's that simple and that uncomplicated, and it's just as true today as it was then. But we also know that those who reject Jesus will not let it be that simple. They will continue to verbally attack Jesus. And at some point, they will feel that even that is not enough. And they will seek to destroy Jesus, his very life, even as they had already sought to destroy his reputation. This should be a pretty strong reminder to us that if we are to have life within us, we must reflect it in our speech. Notice what St. Paul says today in our second reading. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. That's such an interesting turn of phrase. Grieving God, grieving the Holy Spirit. All bitterness, fury, anger, Shouting, reviling must be removed from you along with all malice. Notice how many of those words St. Paul uses are about speech. If hurtful words are what we use, maybe it is because malice is in our hearts. If that is so, then St. Paul says, replace what is in your heart. Replace the malice with compassion. Replace the anger with kindness. Replace the bitterness with forgiveness. And then your speech will reflect your new heart. But sometimes that's not what we want to do. We don't want to say what we say, but we say it anyway, maybe out of frustration. But we need to remember that among all the abuses heaped upon Jesus, he was a victim of verbal abuse. 
And we also have at least a couple of commandments that remind us to be careful in our speech, even as we are in our thoughts and our deeds. One tells us that the Lord's name is holy, and we should not use his name in a negative or profane or blasphemous way. Certainly not when we are angry or upset, but not even out of casual disrespect or because we want to make a point or because we want people to think we're cool by doing so. Another commandment says we should not bear false witness against one another. The, use, the worst use of our words is when we use them to intentionally deceive, to lie. Said in another way, honesty really is the best policy. I think if we simply remember that it is in these very same mouths that we receive our Lord Jesus Christ, the bread come down from heaven, then we will not profane our Lord. We will not abuse one another with foul speech. We will instead make our tongues thrones for God by our kind words and thoughtful speech.